Hello and welcome to your COVID-19 local update. I'm Deborah Hutchison in the Rogers TV studio. Joining us now is GM VP Corporate and Environmental Affairs, Mr. David Patterson. Welcome. Welcome back. Hey, Deborah. Thank you. When we last spoke May 5th, uh, GM Oshawa was just starting to set up to make the masks. It is now uh, May 26th, and once again, you're all over the news today. What mm -hmm. has changed? Well, today was the first day of, of uh, full production for face masks out of the Oshawa plant, so it's quite exciting. Uh, and uh, what we've done over the last uh, month or so is really work in parallel uh, to make the machines, to get the machines uh, shipped to Canada, uh, to install them, to hire back 60 people that uh, are now trained and ready to start uh, high volume manufacturing of masks. And at the same time, we've been working with the federal government to get all the approvals completed. Um, so that uh, we were ready to go. And uh, we actually got all of those things uh, sorted out last night uh, and we've started production today. So it's just in time once again at General Motors and it's really exciting to, to be doing something that can really help. Now these masks, they are non-medical masks, correct? Well, they, they are, uh, yes, they're the, the kind of face coverings that, uh, that you'll see all of us using um, as, as, we, uh, as we go about our lives now until we, uh, we get a vaccine and uh, we can truly come back to normal. So the kind of mask that you would use at work at General Motors, the kind of mask you'd use to get on a subway, or get in a taxi, go shopping. Uh, and that's about 95% of the mask needs that we have in Canada. I've seen a, uh, an analyst report that in Canada, we're gonna need upwards of about 3 billion of these types of regular face coverings over the course of the year to cover people at work and people uh, just doing their shopping and all those types of things. There is this other kind of mask I think we've talked about before called an N95 mask, mm -hmm. which is getting a lot of attention, but there are other types of, of masks as well. Um, and uh, uh, that is the type of mask that has a uh, much more of a, a, a seal. It's a little bit, not certainly not as comfortable to wear. Uh, and it's for the protection of the, uh, the person who is wearing it. So surgeons and people that are in, uh, for instance, even our, in our plant, paint plant, where there is criteria emission in the air, um, would use an N95 mask. We use face masks more to protect others around us. It's more of a civic duty. And it's a way of uh, containing uh, COVID in the workplace, um, making sure that anybody that might perhaps be symptomatic um, is really protecting others around them. And so we're gonna need millions and millions of those masks. Millions and millions. How many will be coming out of the GM Oshawa facility? We'll be producing um, upwards of a million a month and perhaps more as we ramp up. And uh, you know, you don't do that on your first day, but uh, um, we're actually ahead of schedule right now in terms of our ability to, to meet those kinds of numbers. And so, uh, so we've uh, arranged with the uh, federal government to make at least 10 million masks over the rest of this year, and uh, we intend to do that. And so your customer is the, the federal government. I guess people are asking, can they get their hands on these masks that you're making? But they will be sent then to the federal government. Is that how is it going to yes, work? Yes, we just have, we have one customer, which is the Public Health Agency of Canada. And uh, our thinking in doing that was that uh, Health Canada can best decide where we need to distribute masks to the places of greatest need. Some of these masks will be worn eventually by healthcare workers as well. Um, and within the healthcare and uh, frontline uh, area, there are different needs, different types of masks for different needs. And so, uh, we need to uh, increase the stockpile of those available um, and uh, will help to, to make a difference in that regard. So you said 60 employees are now working full time. Is it shift work? Um, you yeah, know, it what is does their day look like? It's uh, two shifts each day and uh, uh, six days a week. And um, you know, people will move around and do different uh, things within the process. They're, it's not a huge area uh, compared to certainly the type of things that we're used to doing within, you know, auto assembly plants. Uh, but it's been located in a clean room area 
of the uh, Oshawa plant. And uh, if people are interested, I encourage you either to go on social media today or, or go to gm.ca and, and just take a look. We have a time-lapse video of the setting up of the room and the equipment and, uh, and a little message in there from our president, Scott Bell, really thanking everybody that has helped us bring this together. We've worked really closely with Unifor. Uh, we've worked really closely with, uh, with all levels of government and uh, keeping people in touch as to the things that we're doing. And, uh, you know, face masks are just one element of the, the, the different things that we can all do to help. And uh, uh, we at General Motors are really pleased, whether it's our dealers uh, that are doing amazing things in the communities or whatever. This is a time when in an emergency, I think Canadians are at their best. And uh, certainly it's not just General Motors, it's all kinds of companies and people in the auto sector and uh, all through Durham region that are just doing amazing things. So uh, it's a tough time, but uh, it's a time we can be proud to be Canadian. How were these 60 employees chosen and what sort of uh, training did they receive? Well, they, uh, we have uh, a number of people, not a great number, that are still on layoff from the changes that we saw. Um, as you know, we've, we've reinvested in the Oshawa plant, um, and a big portion of that is making auto parts now. And uh, that uh, has ramped up. We've got the, the safety uh, procedures in place um, to do that. And uh, uh, we've seen that on national television and the like. Um, uh, we uh, therefore have, we work with Unifor and there's a process that the union will uh, go through to determine which uh, people are sort of recalled first. And uh, then we bring them back. We have this really amazing advantage of uh, having uh, uh, developed the machinery and the capability to develop uh, face masks in the United States um, at about three weeks ahead of where we are. And uh, so we've had the people that are working in the uh, Michigan plant come up to Canada and uh, be training our workers on how exactly to do this, because this is GM developed equipment and GM developed process. It's working very well in Michigan. And so we're just replicating a lot of that. And our biggest advantage is that we have a supply of the materials that uh, we as General Motors have a wonderful supply chain and great uh, capability in that area. So we have a very, very reliable uh, source of material for the type of face masks that we're making. And uh, so putting all that together allowed us to go quickly. And uh, right now we all need to go quickly to make sure we take care of our health. Well, kudos to the staff because that is a, a rather quick learning curve. It is, but that's what we do. We got really smart people and uh, the, uh, the, the process of manufacturing something is... Uh, how we could contribute um, and that involves you know much more than just the machinery it's the the smart people that can do it i i couldn't be more proud of ian Suter, who's the the manager of this process he's the guy that uh, worked with the team put the materials together got it loaded in here set it up take a look at that uh, time lapse video and and it's just amazing what they were able to do quickly and uh, uh, these are people that have worked uh, in the car plant to uh, you know, putting vehicle programs in over the year, uh, over the years, I never once thought that uh, I'd see the day where we became a registered medical device um, manufacturing company, but we are now, and uh, uh, we're we're moving quickly. the The contract is it for just a year? Do you think this will go on past one year? It could. Um, it it really. Uh, uh, is based around the um, the special emergency uh, procedures that the federal government has put in place um, for procurement, and uh, that runs until about May of next year, I believe, March or May. And uh, so uh, we're definitely um, uh, running until that period of time, and then we'll just see where we are. Um, and in between, if there's adjustments we need to make, um, we'll look at doing that too. We want to help. Do you foresee needing even more employees and expanding what you're doing? Uh, not at the moment. Um, you know, we have a, a very clear mandate um, and a volume target to make. We think we have um, exactly the right uh, number of people and uh, they're extremely excited to be doing this. It's kind of a, you know, it's, it's a once in a lifetime 
uh, type of opportunity to really be part of something that uh, that could help all Canadians. And so, you know, uh, people that are coming back to work in the time of COVID-19 can be nervous about the processes. And what we're hearing back from our people is that they actually feel safer at work with all the procedures that we have than they do when they step out of uh, the plant. Um, so uh, we've worked very, very hard to make sure it's safe, uh, that uh, you know we are safe in manufacturing something that's going to help other people to be safe. And uh, so a lot of time went into that, and uh, so far it's going really, really well. Worldwide with General Motors, we've not had a single case of COVID transferring within the workplace. We take safety really, really uh, seriously, and uh, that really comes down to working closely with your people. Let's talk about the precautions that you have uh, in place to protect your employees. Yeah, uh, certainly. And I'd invite anybody who's interested in that or any business that is wondering, you know, what could I learn from General Motors in terms of uh, procedures for bringing people safely back to work to go to gm.ca on our website. And we have a 60 page uh, back to work safety procedure protocol. It's there for everybody. We want our suppliers to see it. We have a required training for every one of our employees before they come back to work to go through an online training course and then all kinds of training in the workplace. And it comes down to how do you protect people um, by making sure that we don't allow anyone with any symptoms into the plant in the first place. So there are questionnaires, there are heat screenings and uh, um, all kinds of hand washing and the like as you arrive. Uh, second thing is to make sure that uh, everything is safe and clean in the workplace. So of course we're wearing our PPE, our face masks, face shields where needed, gloves, and uh, we're cleaning all the time. We're taking time out from our regular production processes for extra cleaning, cleaning of individual workspaces. We're changing the air conditioning systems and it's all laid out there in that in that plan. And then the last part is that if you do uh, end up with somebody that is uh, having symptoms in the workplace, there's a procedure to work with the healthcare system so that uh, that person is taken out of the workplace, that we're very careful. We have the capability to do tracing of where that person has been. Um, and with all the privacy protections, we will be able to work with uh, their doctor to, to make sure that they get properly tested. And then on top of that, we've also been working with the provincial governments very interested in upping our testing in, um, in Ontario as we start to get back to work. And we need to start testing asymptomatic people because we know COVID can be transferred from people that don't show signs. And so we've set aside a parking lot in Oshawa uh, by the plant for the healthcare system should they want to set up a drive-through testing capability. And I think what we're going to find in the weeks and months ahead is that people are going to start to realize that the first stage of civic duty is wear a mask, protect other people around you. Uh, even if you don't have symptoms, wear a mask and protect people uh, from any potential transmission. But the second thing will be get tested. And we're starting to hear the province now really stepping up and saying, I want everybody to get tested that we can. It will give us data. It will give us information so that we know more about uh, the, the coronavirus and how it's carried and who's carrying it. Um, and I think a, a new part of our civic duty is going to be go and get tested. And so instead of people saying, no, I don't have any symptoms, I can't be tested. No, you should get tested. And so we're really working to, to see if we can help out in that area too. Okay. David Patterson, VP Corporate and Environmental Affairs for GM Canada. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.